Johan, nice to have you here. Thanks for nice having to us. have you in Finland because it's been, like you said, extraordinary summer yeah. <laughs> and spring uh, yeah. with, with a lot of activities kind of being downplayed. But we are getting back to at least somewhat normal, if not completely. So you have a new album coming out in early October, I think, Manifest. Yeah, uh, yeah. October 2nd. Yes. Yeah, October 2nd. So uh, how do you feel about the Thank end result much. and uh, how was the complete of the album was it already the corona situation ongoing or was it finished before this whole thing pandemic thing came in so did it affect the recordings at all we managed to <laughs> to time it quite well unless you know apart from the fact that we didn't, we didn't really time it so uh, basically the timeline was like this we did a tour with uh, Sabaton from uh, mid uh, January to uh, mid February and as soon as we were done with that we spent another uh, uh, six weeks finishing up uh, you know the demos Mm. and uh, working on even some new songs at, at that time. But um, two days before we were set to go down to, uh, to Denmark, uh, we obviously live in Sweden, we record in Denmark. Mm. We heard that they were go going to close the border the day after okay. at, uh, at noon. So we had to uh, make a quick decision at 11 in the evening. Are we still going to do this? You know, Because now with insight, we know how the situation turned out. It turned out bad, but I remember the way that I was thinking back then was that it could have turned out a lot worse. You know, uh, what if really, they, yeah. you know, close down the country completely, they open mm. up specific, uh, specific internment camps, you know, whatever. Exactly. They start to kick out, you know, foreigners. What if we can't get back into Sweden, for example, from yeah. the fact that we've been in Denmark? Yes. <clears throat> so there was a lot of question marks, obviously, going down and recording a heavy metal album. But, but we, we, we felt that we... Um, since we understood that there was going to be a quarantine or an isolation period, we felt that it's definitely better to be useful than to do something constructive during that time. Mm -hmm. So we did go down to Denmark. Okay, and everything went well over there. <laughs> well, the thing is that uh, once we came down there, it was a lot like business, like you show, mm -hmm. because obviously there was a lot, a lot of with the you know social distancing and mm -hmm. a lot of you know, uh, let's say. Yeah, just general isolation. Also, mm. when you were going to um, uh, to the supermarket, you were trying to stay away from people. But yeah, exactly. We were we record all our albums on the Danish countryside, so we were used to the, this kind of uh, modus operandi from before. So no big difference there. Yeah, very small yeah. difference. Yeah. I would say. Yeah. 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 Well, I think the, the biggest difference with that all this Corona shit actually caused was me living here in Finland, mm. uh, and we discovered that. Me getting to Denmark would be uh, quite of a risk crossing two close borders. Uh, there were flights, but they were so insanely expensive, so we wouldn't have money left over for anything else. Mm. Uh, so we decided for me to go and record the album here in Helsinki. That's actually okay. around right the corner there. down here. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, and the result turns up better than expected, and we worked with uh, I worked with Jonas Parkman on that one, mm. the recording, and. We know each other personally and mm. professionally, and I don't think we could have chosen any other, any better way to do my bass parts for this album than mm. to do it with Jonas. Yeah. So that was I the biggest know. difference that I didn't go to Denmark, mm -hmm. actually. Otherwise, yes. it was, as you all have said, it business as usual. Yes. And uh, some of the bands really seem to make it important that all the band is together and doing recording live. So yeah, there's no problem can't. with you. Yeah. Well, if you can't, yeah, then that's... you have to improvise and make it Exactly. Yeah. Of course, mm. the, the bad thing with the whole thing is that this album recording, uh, I felt a bit outside. But mm. that goes without saying. I mean, me being here and doing my stuff mm. in Finland and they having a good time in Denmark. Uh, and I miss my friends. So that was the, the negative side of it. But yeah, exactly. uh, in the end, we you can't put in the personal values in that mm. sense. You have to think of the, the product about the album. Uh, if I want to be part of the album, this is what I have to do. Yes. So it's a small mm. price to pay. Yes. And if you think about your personal parts, your best parts, your best parts, you already said that they were good sounding and, and everything yeah. worked well and your guitar sound. Is there any difference between the old albums and this new one? regarding guitars, because uh, a lot of the times when people talk about Amaranth, they mention the vocals, the, a lot of guests and the synthesizers and keyboards and whatever, but there's a lot of going on in the guitar side as well. 
Exactly. No, but uh, <clears throat> I think it's uh, important to uh, try to you know continue to develop another aspect as mm. well. Every time that we are about to record an album, me and Jacob Hansen spent uh, quite a lot of time uh, with setting up the guitar sound. The way the thing that I have found, mm. I think that people are really into <clears throat> you know trying out different amplifiers and stuff like that. For me, it's mm. always but uh, you know since I started to record with the Angle Fireball. <clears throat> I'm not endorsed by Angle, by the way, so this is not only a promotional <laughs> talk, but since I started to play with that amp, uh, I was just, you know, extremely satisfied with it. Mm. So for me, it's a lot more important to, um, yeah, what people tend to forget mm. is, you know, the way the pick that you use, the way that you angle your hand, the strings that you use, mm. the um, uh, also the, the boost pedal that you're using, the way that you place the mics, the cabinet mm. that you're using, mm. all of these things go into, you know, creating the perfect guitar sound. Also, I have to say, it's really a lot up to how you compose the riffs as well. This guitar sounds uh, sound fit perfectly for Amaranth. For another band, Arch Enemy or In Flames, I'm not so sure actually, because mm. um, every guitar player and every band has a you know a different approach to things. Mm. So uh, yeah, we we typically spend a, a day or a day and a half, you know, just setting things up, and then mm. I adjust things as we go along, basically. Yeah, yeah. So how about you in the in the bass parts? Yeah. Was there anything different compared to the last albums in the sound and in the approach well, of playing? Uh, uh, always tend to keep it quite simple because the bass is never really in your face. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but I did the usual by Warwick basses. I am endorsed by Warwick, so I'm, okay, I can't say that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then it's just plugged straight into the computer. Mm. Uh, and record it, put some distortion on and just mm. play it. Uh, the bass is not as much uh, in your face as the guitar is. Mm. And it's not supposed to be. Yeah, uh, even I, though I on this so. album, uh, the bass has never been this high up. Okay. It's loud. No, no. It's, uh, I was just about to say when you said not so in your face, I, I would say on this album it is terribly in your face in a very nice so way. So this is no and just this yeah. role for Metallica. Also, <laughs> no, exactly. <laughs> It's the quite the opposite, yeah. yeah. But still, the, the the bass blends into the mix. Definitely, yeah. 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 It's exactly what it should be. Yeah. Yeah. My okay. opinion about bass is, uh, you're not always supposed to hear it clearly, but if mm -hmm. you take it away, you surely would miss it. Okay. So regarding the songs actually themselves, uh, is it? Do you think that it's continuation of the last record, or or does it bring something new to the table? It's still very melodic. It's still very, you know. Uh, a lot, lot is going on in regards of the vocals and keyboards and like I said, bass is in your face. I was listening to it, but it still sounds very much like Amaranth. I think you, you cannot mistake the band. No, 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 it's, it's difficult to mistake it. Yeah. Now, what we wanted to do essentially mm -hmm. was to, to build upon um, uh, the Helix album as a foundation, because before that, mm -hmm. especially on the two albums before, Master Addictive and uh, Maximalism, mm -hmm. and Maximalism particularly, mm -hmm. uh, was uh, the subject of a lot of experimentation, let's say. And we were really happy about having done that experimentation and we could clearly see what parts worked really well and mm -hmm. what parts we didn't want to keep in the long run but worked for that album let's say so uh, when we went forward for, from the helix album we wanted to take this to the next level but also int introduce a bunch of new elements <clears throat> for example i love composing film score kind of music i spend yeah. whatever little free time i have <laughs> At home and doing quite a bit of that actually so it was uh, interesting to try to incorporate that you know a little bit more mm. i did a couple of um uh experimentation songs that you haven't heard actually no. that it contained a lot of these things and it sounds pretty cool so i might experiment with with it so, a little bit more yeah. but on this okay. album there's a few parts like that on uh, a song called make it better for example mm. yeah you have a little I bit of that epic yeah, film score vibe for example so we always try to uh, freshen things up attack things from a new perspective <clears throat> but most importantly, I think it represents your personal and creative uh, evolution also. Mm. Mm. Uh, every um, album is a little bit of a, um, let's call it a, it captures the zeitgeist mm. of who you were at the person at the time. Yeah, yeah. So obviously you have three vocalists on the album and you have a lot of guests, really impressive list of guests also. And, and Jeff Loom is playing guitar and, and right. Bertu Kivilaks there and, and a lot of these guys. So what was the idea in bringing all these guests? And another thing that is a lot of the times talked about, if you have a lot of guests, you have three vocalists singing in, it can be disoriented or it might not sound together. So how do you approach in getting all these guests to kind of fit into the songs? 
the more we have other people playing, the less we have to play ourselves. Ah, oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, but um, uh, honestly, uh, previously we weren't inviting a lot of uh, guests for this particular reason. With yeah. Amaranth, there's a lot of stuff going on all the time, so we were trying to, you know, have have the focus on the band itself because we were all about establishing, you know, what our sound was about. But I think, you know, on the sixth album, it's pretty clear what we are doing and where we are, you know, heading as creative individuals. So uh, we opened, kind of opened Pandora's box with uh, working together with Angela Gosso on Do or Die. Yeah, that was already on the video. Yeah, at least exactly. Yeah. So that was basically uh, her suggestion. She had an idea for, you know, this uh, lyrical and visual concept, mm. basically for, for the song. And we already had a song that was entitled Do or Die. Like the first riff, and it was almost a little bit arch enemy kind of sounding. Mm. So when she came up with, with with the idea that we should do some kind of collaboration together, mm. I was just like, "Well, I just so happened to have the right song for it." Here you go, you know. Yeah. And so it was. There's yeah. two versions of the song. Yeah, actually, they're actually. Uh, I have to underline. I haven't really said this uh, enough before, but they are two completely different versions because mm. they were re-recorded. Yeah. At the end of the day, this, they ended up sounding quite similar, actually, but. Um, from, from that perspective, it was funny to have the, the voice version, Nils and Hendrix version mm. also. Mm. Uh, anyways, uh, so we opened up that Pandora's box with mm. uh, Angela Gossa. And uh, then we were supposed to do a tour with Battle Beast and uh, Nora, yeah. who we have met you know, quite a few times at yeah. the festivals mm. throughout, throughout mm. the years. And she's always been a, you know, such a super nice person. I haven't really known her that well, maybe until a little bit better now. Uh, but she's definitely one of my favorite singers, period. Mm. Not mm. female singers, but singers, period, in the metal genre. So um, mm. when it was suggested to us that maybe this is something that you should try. Yeah. And she has that raspy voice, which exactly. is quite different than, yeah. you know, yeah. than Ellis, for example. It's a totally There's a different lot of attitude song. in her voice. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. So you still, exactly. So you still have that contrast going on between mm. Normally it's between Elise and the two other boys, mm. but now you have the contrast between Elise and Nora. Yeah, that. yeah. But how much time did it go into, you know, kind of looking at the arrangements of the songs, you know, because the voices are so different that, that they would work for the favor of the song and not against it. Yeah, I think it's a bit of a puzzle, obviously, but mm. it, it's the kind of the, the challenge that is very stimulating creatively, mm. so to speak. Um, <clears throat> the thing is the these days Elise writes you know almost all the vocal lines mm. but it, you know in the in the sense that I interpret the, the, you know the, the music behind the whole thing it gives you a wide palette you know as a yes. composer yes. instead of constantly going for you know mm. roughly the same thing so it gives a lot of artistic freedom you know mm. definitely mm. so we have yeah I do spend a lot of time thinking about these things but mm. a lot less time overthinking things these days has there ever been a situation where someone has like sang a part and you say this does not sound right you take it or, or is it always like your gut feeling is usually right on, on what the song needs i think this is something that we were a bit more experimental with on this album actually okay <clears throat> yeah in the sense that before we would have it locked down a bit earlier mm. okay so it would, it would have been clear that okay this is a very high part of this goes to release the growling part is obvious mm. <clears throat> And uh, then we would, uh, you know, have the slightly lower parts uh, for for Nils. But um, I think at least and me, you know, in terms of uh, keys and tonalities, mm. we were trying to put everything in a range where Nils could always sing along in the choruses, mm. and we could also bounce, you know, Nils and Elise back and forth between all the verses and the pre-choruses as well. Yeah, yeah. So we did try out, you know, both of them on a lot of, you know, different verses before making any final decisions. Yeah, and the record sounds really natural, like, like you know, Good. it fits, each part fits. It doesn't right. sound like someone else should sing that, so that's why I was asking about it. I'm okay, here. yeah. So on this record, you seem to push a bit more of the superhero kind of uh, theme, because you created these superhero cards and there was the past DA theme. Why not? So what's, <laughs> what's the story behind that? Where did it come from? Fucking record label. <laughs> <laughs> okay. No, no, no. It wasn't your. Joke. We've been marionettes <laughs> for the record label. No, but why not do something different? I mean, mm. we've exactly. we've been in the area mm. sniffing around before, uh, like in the Texas. Mm. Yeah, in one sense. Yeah. Uh, 
mm. and also the Helix album. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So why not? I mean, mm. we're pretty famous of pushing the limits mm. in all directions. So we done that pretty much, very much with the music. So why not pushing the limits with the rest of the stuff as well? I mean, why go home when you can go big? Yeah, exactly. So and I think it's just a matter of pushing it a bit. Yeah, yeah. And having fun. I mean, life is doing, fun. Doing something different. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. So uh, regarding the lyrics and and the topics of the uh, of the songs, you know, there's a lot of political and societal talk now with the Black Lives Matter movement and obviously the Corona thing, which happened afterwards. So, but any any of those issues attacked on the songs itself, or do you want to like keep it? Lyrically, I think they have a mm. point actually, but it, mm. it's a uh, for, for us. I think it's a um, massive difference between mm. pushing a political agenda mm. and singing about a current, uh, let's call it, political situation. Yes. So what I find really stupid is that you know something as un apolitical as uh, wearing masks, for example, uh, mm. in the U.S. has turned into a you know conservatives versus liberals yeah, exactly. discussion and very pol polarizing debate as well. Mm. Where people mm. are throwing a lot of hate, you know, back and forth. Mm. Mm. Uh, to us, I think the way that we want to approach things is from, you know, the more positive side. That regardless if it seems like it's complete shit right now, this mm. is nothing compared to what we have gone through as a human mm. species in, you know, mm. in, throughout history. Mm. <clears throat> Look at the Spanish flu, for example. You had mm. literally 200 times the amount of people dying something in that order exactly <clears throat> where in, in you know in a time where people traveled a whole lot less and the population uh, you know in general was smaller <clears throat> and i think this is something that i really feel strongly about in general is just the extremely strong opinions that people have on things everything from uh, let's say it like this you mentioned uh, mm. black lives matters yeah that's uh, which is a very question. sensitive topic yeah. also yeah. the same thing with climate change is a sensitive yeah. topic yeah if you have this opinion, everyone will hate you from that side. If you take the other opinion, then everybody will hate you from the other side. Yeah. You stray but a little from an absolute centrist point of view and you get a lot of hate. Yeah. And the thing yeah. is that climate change is not a topic of politics. And yeah, uh, face you know, mask is not I mean, a topic of politics. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Black Lives Matter. Well, obviously, mm. I don't think that anybody disagrees. Mm. No. Yeah. I mean, except from a very small percentage that are actually racists will everybody else will agree that obviously black lives matter so obviously this is something that we should be fighting towards mm. but just because you have someone on the left pushing this in an extreme way and you have some of the right pushing that in an extreme yeah it creates way, this <clears throat> it creates a tension that is yeah. it's not to the benefit of the cause of any mm. of these people actually mm. no mm. it's just going to make the at the end of the day everyone is going to be a loser Yes. Yeah. So no one's gonna gain anything. It's yeah. just gonna be the same shit storm all yeah. over again when we wake up tomorrow. So and, and exactly. you know, music and metal in general that should bring people together and not kind of like yeah. keep them and apart. Uh, so. Rather than being polarizing. So we yeah. want to yeah. uh, touch on these kind of sensitive topics, but we want to do it then uh, do that in an apolitical manner. Mm. Let's say. Yeah. Okay. Uh, the first single of the album, well, I think, and the video was viral. Mm -hmm which was released and I think that was that was into this time. So was that kind of like a therapy for the band of making the video and and creating the single? <laughs> How does it look like a bit more like torture? Yeah. <laughs> torture, okay. <laughs> so, so tell us about that. What was the experience like? Uh, oh my God. Why no, we, we, uh, we just came uh, out from, um, you know, long and arduous uh, process of recording the album mm. itself. And right before that, we were, um, you know, also writing music for First six weeks before mm. that, then the Sabaton tour, and then another two, mm. you know, and a half mm. something months of um, mm. of uh, writing music. So, <clears throat> all in all, it, it had been, you know, for some of us, six and a half months of non-stop work. And because of the Corona situation, we had mm. to do as many things as possible, as quick as possible. Yes. Uh, like photo shoots and video shoots, and you know, certain promo uh, things, and you know, all all these different. Uh, aspects that you have to work on, you know, in conjunction with an album release. Uh, <clears throat> but I started, uh, I actually came home the very late the night right before that video shoot. Mm. And then we were, uh, I was looking at the schedule and I said, okay, video shoot this day ends at five in the morning. Next day, five in the morning. And I'm like, 
fucking hell. I think the last day we shot the video, we ended oh. like five in the morning, and then we had to get up at eight to do this uh, uh, online press conference. Yeah. That lasted for okay. like ten hours. Yeah, it was it was pre pretty, pretty, pretty pretty rough. Yeah. yeah, but I think it's um that might have connected quite quite well with the uh, you know topic of the video. Itself. Yeah, exactly. That's the point. Yeah. Because uh, we were feeling a little bit worn down, and uh, mm. that's pretty you know accurate to how you know a lot of people are feeling you know during the, the current circumstance. Yeah. <clears throat> but it was important for us to uh, with the video to show how much we are eager to return back to the stage, so it's mm. not all doom and gloom. Let's say. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So one of the your songs did touch with the Corona situation. There was a cover from Miniva called "My Guarantee," <laughs> which oh, yeah, you yeah, shared yeah. on your exactly. Facebook. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, how yeah. did you feel about that? And it was just, it super cool. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> this uh, lady did a cover of the "Digital World," also I think maybe a year ago, uh, mm. that that we were checking yeah. out on tour. I think she's a great singer, actually. So it was funny to hear that interpretation. <laughs> And it kind of shows you that your songs can be looked at from from various angles. So yeah, yeah, like, exactly. So. And also, so, it shows that despite all the tragic that happens, people still have some fun. Yeah, exactly. And which a sense of humor, yeah. which is becoming humor, increasingly yeah. rare these days. Yeah, yeah. 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 It's serious. almost you're getting stoned and beheaded if you have a sense of humor. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So you did a cover version of of a Sabaton song, which was the eighty second all the way. Right. So so how did that come about? Besides that, you were touring together, but was it the idea that came during the tour, or or was it something that you had thought about earlier already? It That's... was um it was for the tour. It was okay. a conversation that we were having with the with the Sabaton guys that you know we should do some kind of collaboration. Mm. So we were discussing quite a few different ideas of how we could go about things. <clears throat> and it was actually uh, Pat, who's the head on show and the bass player of Sabaton, was uh, suggesting that, you know, I have had, we have this song that I think would fit cute for a cover. And it was before the, the new album was uh, released also, so he said yeah. over this 80 second all the way. <clears throat> I was listening to it on a train, uh, I forget when it was, but I was sitting on that train instantly thinking that this will be actually relatively easy to turn into an Amaran song. Mm. Sabaton is also a band that is, you know, a lot about the, you know, the catchiness of the melodies. Yeah, and it's, the, it's really catchy. The power of the music, but at the mm. same time, you know, an uplifting message and, mm. you know, these things. <clears throat> so with the, the chord, chord progression and with the vocal lines, it was very easy to to imagine how Amrath would interpret it. <clears throat> so we, we actually did this at the same time as we recorded the, the Do or Die single. Okay. In November, I believe it was. Yeah, I think it was with that. Yeah, so. November, yeah. 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 And uh, it took us less than a day to arrange it and record it. Okay, so that was fast. Yeah, it was really extremely fast. fast. But now that I listen to it, it's, it sounds solid. The guys yeah. from Sabaton loved it as well. So. Okay, so besides now that you're you're here doing this interview, you have played in Finland a lot of times. You know, yeah. done many tours here. Who knows? Regular how many shows here. Yeah. <laughs> so any special memories that stand out from from the Finnish tours or or gigs or, or anything that's happened here that stands out? From, from a lot of <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, uh, I met my wife in Kusto. That's pretty standard. 2012. Yeah. yeah, that's pretty standard. <laughs> that's standard. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I guess you can say so. <laughs> <laughs> Shit happens Hopefully. when you're partying yeah. all over. Yeah. yeah. No, but that that would be the most significant uh, thing for me. Mm. And then also like playing a rock fest mm -hmm. in Hvidebro. Mm. Uh, that was like a couple of years ago. Yeah. yeah. That Both was also and, uh, pretty yeah, fucking yeah. massive. You proposed to your lady in Hüvenke from stage. Ah, oh, yeah. Uh, she thought that she was coming to surprise you, but it was actually the other way around. Olaf knew that mm. his now wife would mm. come. She didn't know that he knew. So she thought that she would surprise him. Okay. Uh, so but at the end of the day, he surprised her with proposing to her on stage. Mm. That was also a pretty basic standout, I guess. <laughs> a bit, yeah, a bit. Uh, a bit. No, but, but Finland yeah, has always been so. It's been a great, great country for us. Uh, yeah. yeah. The shows has always been really good, and we get massive reception here. It, it, I mean, if we would get as big uh, in the rest of the world as we are in Finland, well, we would laugh all the way. Yeah, we pay yeah. pay the bills. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. No, but yeah, just like you were saying, I mean, it's. It's kind of the standard thing for a musician to say, you know, whenever whichever country you're in, 
yeah, we like this country a little bit better than the last one we were in. Yeah, that's but, but, but I think it's easy to see that, you know, uh, Finland's yeah, quite easily the main country for for Amran since quite early on. Yeah. Mm. It was the, the first yeah, really. country that we played our summer festival. It was the first country that we ever played our headline arena show. It was even the first uh, <clears throat> country where we played our first proper headline club show, you know, at a, yeah. larger than a pub. Yeah. 300 yeah. capacity. Kind the of first thing. country mm. we played our headline arena show. Yeah, you said that one. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's always Good. a great time. Yeah. So obviously the next question, when are you going to play here again? So how does it look like regarding live gigs for Amaranth? You tell me. <laughs> yeah. It's still open. In it's the, anybody's yeah. guess, I suppose. But yeah. mm. I don't know, when it comes to situations like this, as long as mm. you're deep into them, it feels like time is moving really slowly. And yes. Yeah. I see a lot of people saying that, yeah, maybe it will be until 2022, until we can start to play even a little bit normal shows. But yeah. I think that people have lost perspective a little bit. It's actually only been, what is it, uh, five months, months so barely like five months, yeah, yeah, four and a half March. months. Yeah. Four and a half months is a very short mm. amount of time. Mm. And it's kind of an unpredictable virus for bad and for good. Yeah. 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 In the sense that we, uh, at some point we were expecting, you know, 6% lethality mm. or death rate, you know, <clears throat> for the virus, which was obviously not true. Mm. Um, so I think it, hopefully it could return to back to normal more quick mm. than people might think, actually. Mm. So, uh, but again, we're hoping for next year. Yeah, yeah. If we can get back to normal in, uh, you know, in spring mm. next year, that would be fantastic, yeah. I would yeah. say, for everyone involved. Yeah. Before that, do you have any plans to do maybe online speaks that many people are doing the stream shows before that? Yeah, if we do it, we have to find the right... Uh, context and circumstance for it mm. because um, to just stand on a normal stage and play like it's a normal show but then it's quiet <clears throat> quiet in between the songs it's just going to be weird so yeah it it's be, it's mixed yeah. emotions about it because Absolutely. all of us feel like we of course we want to give something to our fans yeah. when we're not able to go out and play proper live shows but also uh, it's fucking difficult yeah yeah I mean, you don't want to sink your own boat so to speak Mm. by doing a live streaming show that doesn't really take it all the way. Mm. So, so um, yeah, we're looking into it, basically. Yeah, it's something that yeah. we're discussing, and let's mm. let's see. Basically. Yeah, we open for the possibilities, but we have to conduct it the right way. Yeah. yeah. So regarding the new songs, obviously, do you think they will be good on stage? So do you plan to like play probably the whole album or just, you know, pick the cherry pick the best songs of the album for, for a live stage? The entire album is <clears throat> it's written to be played live. Mm. It's influenced by the you know vastly by the tour that we did with Sabaton. So yeah, I think this is you know an album that would translate better than any one of the previous ones to the live situation. It's straight to the point. It's powerful and it's heavy and you know it has all the ingredients that should make it a good album to play yeah. live. Yeah. So as many of the songs as possible, I would say. Yes, regarding the situation, whether it's online yeah. or whatever. Yeah. So how about rare songs from your past? Because I got this actually from, from your longtime fan, you know, says, I've been asking Burn With Me for many times and I even asked them backstage and they still haven't played, played Burn With Me. So any right. any ideas to play some of those songs as well? I mean, um, I think when we are putting together the next live set in general, mm. whatever mm. that is, <clears throat> or I mean, possibly mm. for a live stream show, then we will probably look into, you know, old stuff to bring back that we want to play again. Uh, yeah. And maybe, you know, some of the songs that we've been playing, maybe, maybe a bit too much for the last, for the last five, six yeah. years that we, you know, switch these around a little bit. Um, Burn With Me, maybe, who knows? Yeah. We played it live for a very long time. We played it between 13 and 17. Okay, so it's only been three years since. Yeah. And we played it over and over and over and over so, and over until we were like, okay, that's it for now. Yeah, yeah. so that's that's a good point because you also need to enjoy it yourself. So you can, yeah. you know, yeah. you, if you're getting tired of a song and it starts to show, then maybe it's time to give it a rest. Exactly. You know, play something else. Yeah, because you have to do it honestly to the towards the fans. If you walk mm -hmm. up and play a song not completely 100% full heartedly, yeah. it will show. Yeah. Uh, and then it just. It doesn't feel right. Yeah, yeah. So, is it easy for you to put a set list together, or or is it like everyone has their different ideas on what to play? This is it's not an easy thing when it comes to mm. this band for many different mm. reasons. Uh, 
one of them is uh, both me and Johan we play in uh, you know quite a few different shootings. So yeah, that's in one. instrument changes. Yes, yes, yeah. exactly. We have uh, four four different main tunings, for mm. example. So that means at least uh, two different instruments, and also uh, do some tuning yourself. So that needs to be timed well. <clears throat> uh, so you have to put the breaks where the mm. instrument changes are, for mm. example. And uh, then it's also important, you know, with the um, dynamics. Also, so you don't have the same key, you know, five yeah. songs in a row. Yes, exactly. And also with the tempo, naturally. Mm. And uh, some songs can be, you know, a bit challenging for, you know, for the singers. Like, let's say if one song is super challenging for these, then I will not put another super challenging oh, song right after that. Yeah. After. So <clears throat> for a long time, I was uh, putting together a set list myself and we were just hoping for the best and we got used to it. But <clears throat> now I sketched this general idea and I mm. sent it to the band and we just dis discussed about it. Yeah. So yeah, let's see when it comes to that. I think it's for me and you, is the, we have the, the simple part in that because the instituting and you set up the set list so you know where what songs we can put yeah. after each other because you know what tuning, but the challenge is obviously mm -hmm. not to push the singers too much. Yeah. Okay. Exactly. Yeah. Okay, so any last greetings for any the last readings or <laughs> <Exactly>. <laughs> for the Metal Law readers? Uh, thank you for having us. You, Make yeah. sure that you check out our new album and uh, See you when I see you. And I uh, also want to add a fucking thank you, Finland, for being there since day one and supporting us. It's yeah. um, We are truly humble and grateful about it, really, really 100%. And see you on guys as soon as possible. Yeah. Yes. All right. Olaf, Johan, thank you very much. Thank Amara. you very much. Thank yeah. you.